We will officially begin our meeting this evening, and I want to welcome everyone here. I uh, particularly want to welcome our Rotary family. It's really nice to see all of you out tonight, and it's uh, always great to spend time with you. But I also want to welcome those Rotarians from out of town. We have a few here, and we certainly want to welcome you here and hope you enjoy this evening as well as any other time that you have to spend in our city. There are a lot of things going on, so enjoy that time as well. And I want to pay a special thank you and welcome to those former Rotarians that have taken the time to come out and help us celebrate 100 years. Some have uh, been a part of Rotary for a number of years and uh, no longer participate, but we're so glad to have you here. And it'll be a special part of our evening. And we will begin that evening with uh, a prayer by James Sullivan. Shall we go to God in prayer? Dear God, we do want to thank you for all the many blessings that you sent our way, especially Jesus. He came to this earth to be a servant, and we know the Rotary 100 years ago, the men decided that they need to serve because they were so well blessed. And that's continued on down through the years, and we want to thank you for all the, the people that's participated in Rotary, that it's not about them, it's about helping others because they feel so well blessed. We know tonight, dear God, that as we uh, celebrate 100 years, that uh, it's a milestone that, uh, that we appreciate. And also, we want to thank you for the, the uh, charter members and those that figured that uh, Pipeville needed a Rotary Club, which we're a part of. We know, dear God, there have been a lot of changes. We, we're glad that women came into Rotary because they're, they seem to be the backbone. They're workers that uh, they see causes and they want to make sure that things go the way that they should. We pray, dear God, that you'll bless the food that uh, is provided for us tonight that will be nourished for our bodies. We want to thank uh, also uh, David Lester for the past year. We know, dear God, that being president of Rotary comes with a, a lot of responsibility and the board members and all of those that uh, that has participated and, and as chairs different uh, organizations as as far as uh, like uh, that we uh, have all during the year to try to raise funds so that we can help others. We know to God that uh, we're a blessed people and we want to have thankful hearts and I think that's ro Rotary. Uh, flagship is each one of us as Rotarians we know that we we're well blessed and we want to share those blessings with others that possibly is less fortunate than we are I ask that you would be with each and every one tonight dear God we know that uh, this celebration uh, is not only for the Rotarians but also for the husbands or wives of Rotarians dear God we pray a special blessing on Kay Hammond as she takes the helm and all those that uh, the new board members, dear God, we pray that uh, you'll be with them. The decisions they make will only be the right decisions with your help. We know, dear God, that we, we need to continue to, to be the type of people that believe in serving others. And we want to thank you for Rotary to give us that opportunity. All these favors and blessings I do we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And our pledge... Uh, Margot Riggs. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the four-way test, uh, Frank Dahlher. Okay, the four-way test that Rotarians, and really a great way of life for all of us, the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is, is it true? Second, is it fair to all third, will it build and fourth, Thank you, Frank. You may be seated. We have uh, past president Jerry Caney 
will be here to uh, acknowledge the visiting Rotarians and also to recognize those honored guests that we're certainly proud to have with us. So, uh, Jerry, if you would. Rotary was formed in 1905. I was fortunate to go to the 100-year celebration in Chicago that year. There were 10,000 people there. We have about 150 here today, and we have some special guests. 1.4 million Rotarians are from 46,000 clubs, but our visiting Rotarians, if you would stand, Dale Elifritz, past district governor, Keith Kay, over there, Cindy Legg, Paintsville gal, Jean Clark, are you here? Jean is not here yet. She is the incoming district governor nominee. Gil Faber and Brenda Faber, assistant governor, over here. Hey, welcome. And Patton Hart, visiting Rotarian president from Louisa. Where are you? Not here yet. Okay. We have some honored guests. You can be seated. We have a person who I really appreciate, Dr. Harry Altman, past president, past Rotarian, 7778. Harry, would you please stand? I want to personally thank Harry because he was my sponsor for getting in to this fabulous Pikeville Rotary Club. <laughs> Bill Burchett, Banker Bill. Give him a round of applause. And Bob Ford with his lovely wife, Lula. Would you please stand? Now, Rotary has two official mottos. Number one is service above self. And number two is one profits who serves best. Here we have friends, leaders, and problem solvers in our club who see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe in our communities and in ourselves, and especially here in Pikeville. We have some more honored guests, and I'll name these, and if you'd stand and hold your applause for all of them, and when we get done with them, let's stand and give them a big round of applause, standing ovation. Commissioner Steve Hartsock. Commissioner Patrick McNamee. Paul Patton, Governor and Honorary Rotarian. Would you stand, please? Judy Patton, Honorary Rotarian. Mayor and Mrs. James Carter. Jimmy, please stand. Hey. And. My favorite banker. You can't. <laughs> Everybody jumps up. Mark Gooch <laughs> and his lovely wife, Pat. When you ask Mark for money, and I do it fairly often, especially for the YMCA and other events, he says, yes, Jerry. And I <laughs> thank him. Dr. Burton Webb and Kay president of the University of Pikeville, one of the organizations that is really changing the dynamics here in Pikeville. Dr. Lori Worth and Eric Worth, and David and Letitia 
Hutchins, Vice President for Advancement. Is David not here? Now, he is a tremendous fundraiser. But with all these honorary guests, I think they deserve a standing ovation. Thank you. Now, Rotary's causes include promoting peace, fighting diseases, providing clean water, sanitation, and supporting education. We support Rotary. There you are. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Jerry. I thought the whole table was going to stand up when he said my favorite banker. I wasn't sure. Uh, yeah. Brett was on the edge of his chair there. Thank you very much, and again, welcome to all you dignitaries. We're so proud that uh, you've chosen to spend your evening with us to help us celebrate this occasion. Um, we had a, a committee to put this together, and uh, we had a chair of that committee, and the chair of that committee was also our club historian. She knows just about everything there is to know about uh, the Rotary Club of Pikeville. And she's done an outstanding job in getting all this together. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you our MC for the evening, Pamela Howard. Thank you, David. I appreciate that very much. I have the pleasure, and I'm very, very pleased to be the MC for tonight. I thank everyone for attending. It's going to be a wonderful night. We talked about this. I had a 12-member committee, which is a large committee, but that shows you how much our Rotarians care, and it was a wonderful committee. I bonded with Jerry Caney. <laughs> the club Rotarians will know that. We're two. Uh, he's an alpha male, and I'm an alpha female. <laughs> but we did get to know each other a little better, even though we've been in Rotary together for a long, long time. And uh, I know Rakesh is happy about that. <laughs> we love to be fun. We love to have fun. We want to have an elegant, dignified meeting tonight and know what the Rotary night is about. But we want to enjoy it and have fun and have laughter. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker for the evening, is Rakesh Sachdeva. He's a past district governor. He is also a past club governor. And this is his passion. And he's going to speak to you about polio. Thank you, Pam, for your kind introduction. And let me, you could. I'm just going to, I'm going to talk about Rotary's legacy. And this is a topic that all of you as Rotarians should be very, very proud of. And we are nearly at the verge of the global eradication of polio. I'm going to talk about this uh, disease. I'm going to talk to you in the form of a story. So please bear with me. If you go back about to 1915, seven years before this club was established, nobody really knew what caused polio. And polio was ravaging the United States, Western Europe. Kids would get sick, have a little low-grade fever, little stomach virus, and then you never know who is the one who is never going to be able to walk again. And just to approach it from the eye of, or the lens of the COVID, right now when you have parents who bring their child to me, who's, which I tell, you know, we may have to run a COVID test, you should see the fear in the eyes of those parents. Even though we can treat COVID, we know COVID is not all that lethal, we can diagnose it at very rapidly, but at that time, you had no way of figuring out who was never going to walk again for the rest of their life. That was the fear of polio. And polio had ravaged humanity for almost 2,000 years. So 
there was a lot of research that was going into figuring out what caused polio, how we can eradicate polio, how, how we can treat polio. And this is a picture that you see, and this is from Manhattan. And there is this young girl, she's standing outside. There's a lot of dirt, and people knew that dirt was somehow associated with polio. Now, who caught polio, how you got polio, who got paralyzed, nobody knew that. And if you just go back to 1944, around this time, there was a ravaging epidemic in North Carolina and Kentucky where hundreds and hundreds of children were coming down with polio. And we were so ignorant at that time that there were towns where a child would come down with polio and the next thing you know is the city would go and burn down all the belongings of the whole family because they didn't want others to get infected. And later on, some of these kids would end up on these machines, which, I, which I'm showing you here, which is the iron lungs, and that's how you were supposed to breathe. And so those, that's how severe polio was. And then, of course, came the miracle of vaccines. This is a picture of Dr. Jonas Salk. He worked in the University of Michigan and then came over to the University of Pittsburgh. And he developed the first vaccine, which was a shot, which was a killed polio vaccine, which we could give, in the, give as a shot. And so when this vaccine was introduced, people were very, very happy that, you know, we're now going to be able to take care of polio. And so this is the shot that would be given and there are stories about how thrilled people were with this vaccine. And so this vaccine was kind of used a lot in the United States. It got uh, licensed in 1954. And in 1955 and 1956, there was another scientist uh, from Cincinnati, Dr. Albert Sabine. And Dr. Albert Sabine thought that polio enters your body through the mouth, so we better develop a vaccine that takes care of the intestinal immunity and in the body. And so he developed what's called the oral polio drops, which is a live vaccine which is watered down. It doesn't cause polio, but it prevents polio. When the word got, when the word got out that Dr. Sabine from Cincinnati had developed a live vaccine, that could be given that prevent polio. There was tremendous resistance all over the United States. They even said that Dr. Sabine's mom and dad in 1903 came from Poland and they had links to Russia. And this was a Russian conspiracy to paralyze the kids of the United States. Well, in Poland and Eastern Europe, they started using the vaccine and they were having great results. And in the United States, we were still having a lot of paralysis because people did not want to get shots for their kids. So in 1959, the Cincinnati area, they decided that they were going to immunize all the kids in the school system and they had great results. And in 1961, the year that I was born, the oral polio vaccine or the Sabine vaccine was, was approved. In fact, the vaccine was so successful that they, in Cincinnati, they would have what is called Sabine Sundays. You know, you took your kids and you went over and there was a sugar cube and they put the drops on the sugar cube and then you got the vaccine. And I'm sure many of you would remember having taken the vaccine on those sugar cubes. But these two vaccines really pretty much changed the trajectory of the polio illness. 1988, when I was serving at my residency, we would have 1,000 cases of polio every year. Last year, we had less than 10 cases of polio globally throughout the world. And so this is the map in 1988. This is the map in 2018. There are only two countries right now, Afghanistan and remote areas of Pakistan, where we have less than 10 cases of polio. In 2015, India was declared polio-free. 
in 2020, the whole continent of Africa was declared polio free. So what did Rotary do and why should you all be very proud of the work that you all have done? So Rotary, actually in 1979, Rotary started a project which is called the 3-H grant where a couple of Rotarians from California got together and they said we should immunize 6 million children in the Philippines. It would cost very little and it would save a lot of lives. That was so successful that in 1985 the Rotary Foundation and Rotary International said we are going to eradicate polio globally. So they got together with the World Health Organization and they formed a partnership which is called the Global Polio Eradication Initiative. And what Rotarians have done since then, Rotarians like you, is that you've contributed $2 billion to the global eradication effort of polio. Bill and Melinda Gates have partnered with us and have contributed $800 million. When Bill Gates decides to match what Rotary does, and right now, for every dollar that you give to the Rotary Foundation for polio eradication, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation matches it two to one. We have spent countless hours. We have been advocates for, for the governments, and as a result of that, almost $18 billion have been contributed by, the, by other governments. And so we are almost at the verge of polio eradication. How did we get here? This is National Immunization Day. You would go to these countries like India, Pakistan, countries in Africa and say, okay, we're going to have this Friday as a national holiday and we're going to immunize 25 million kids. And so this is a picture of a National Immunization Day in India. And this is, again, a volunteer worker in Africa, and she's giving the polio drops. And I'm sure many of you have given the polio drops as well. So we are very, very close to the global eradication of polio, but we still have challenges. L less than 10 cases of polio last year, but we have to have zero cases. So why is zero important? Zero is important because if we stopped what we are doing, within 10 years, we'd have 200,000 cases of polio again. And then polio is only a flight away from the shores of our nation. Take a look at this picture. This is a picture from Afghanistan. And this, you see how war ravaged this is. And there is a lady, her name is Fatima. And she's, give, she's got that blue box, and she's giving a vaccine to the child. And this vaccine has to be stored at a very cold temperature, and she is giving the vaccine. So she was asked, Fatima, how do you feel about saving this child's life? And Fatima said, I don't know if I am saving this child's life, or is polio saving my life, because our lives are tied together. And this is what you all and the Global Polio Eradication Initiative have done. Take a look at this picture. This is a picture that I've taken from, it is September 13th, 2021, the day after the United States pulled out of Afghanistan. And you would say, why do you put this picture up there? Because these innocent kids up in Afghanistan their future and the future of our kids is tied together. If they have polio, it is likely in a globally connected world, our kids would have polio too. And just as a testament of these two scientists who developed the vaccines, Dr. Salk and Dr. Sabine were offered millions of dollars in the 50s to patent that vaccine. Both of them being scientists, physician scientists, said no. Our goal in developing this vaccine was to eradicate polio globally. If we patented, it would become so expensive that other countries would not be able to eliminate polio. And if we don't eliminate polio from the rest of the globe, then polio would never be eradicated from the United States. And so what can you do? We are committed to zero polio cases by 2026. 
you can see that if you would decide to become a member of what is now going to be called the Polio Society, you can contribute $10 a month or $120 a year and become members of this society. And I hope that very soon in 2026, we would be able to celebrate this wonderful accomplishment of a globe that is free of polio. And these, this is the first campaign that was done in 1954. And you see Mary Kloski. She is from Maryville, Tennessee. She is the one who has polio. And Randy Kerr is from Falls Church, Virginia. And he was the first one who was a volunteer to get the injectable polio vaccine. And this was the March of Dimes card for 1954. And another, f another fun story is that when Dr. Sabine developed the vaccine, it was very bitter, and kids didn't like to take it. And so they would put it on a sugar cube. And so there was this uh, gentleman, uh, a wonderful lyricist, John Sherman. And he asked his son Jeffrey when he came home, and he said, Jeffrey, how was your day at school? And Jeffrey said, uh, it was good. I had to take a bitter medicine, but a sugar full, or a, a spoonful of sugar made it better. So now I'm going to invite Robin to end this talk with the song from Mary Poppins. Or just the passage. <laughs> just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, the medicine go down, the medicine go down, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in the most delightful way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's see if I can get this without falling down. Okay, thank you, Robin, a fellow Rotarian. <clears throat> They're serving the salad, so please just enjoy, eat your salad as I talk. I will say one thing. David Lester introduced me and said I knew everything, and then he said about Rotary. Well, my husband will agree with you. I think I know everything. <laughs> he didn't hear that. He's getting a little hard of hearing. Okay, <laughs> what I would like to do is I want to speak to you about the 100-year history of the Rotary Club of Pikeville. Initially, though, I want to tell you how we got that name. The first Rotary Club in the world was organized in Chicago, Illinois, on February 23rd of 1905 by Paul P. Harris. He was a young lawyer who gathered in a spirit of friendship and understanding. These men were engaged in different forms of service, service to the public. At first, the members of the new club met in rotation at the various places of businesses of the members. Thus the name Rotary was adopted. Rotary is the largest civic organization in the world. Now for the history of the Rotary of the Pikeville Club. Our historical documents state that in 1922, a fellow by the name Walter Mayo, who was a member of the Rotary Club of Ashland, would come to Pikeville quite often, and one day he talked to Norman Christman about a Rotary Club in Pikeville. Mr. Christman called Mr. Record, who was president of Pikeville College. Mr. Record came down to Pikeville Grocery Company in February of 1922, where they sat on the porch discussing the possibility of this new club. The records indicate that he even made the comment that it was rather warm that day since it was February of 1922. <clears throat> Dr. Record was enthusiastic they were delegated together a group of citizens. They got the group together, and Mr. Mayo came back to Pikeville in early April 1922. They held an organizational meeting at the Jefferson Hotel. Is anyone here old enough to remember the Jefferson Hotel? <laughs> 
the Rotary Club of Ashland agreed to sponsor the Pikeville Club. There were 17 men at the meeting who agreed to join the club as the charter members. At that time, 15 members were required to secure a charter. Your program on your table, if you look at it tonight, which we hope you will, contains the names of those 17 men responsible for starting this club 100 years ago. These men represented hotel management, wholesale grocery, lawyers, an engineer, a Baptist pastor, banking, mining, building supplies, insurance, newspaper, a merchant, and a president of a college. Now, the Rotarians had a difficult time making it to missed up meetings. Missed meetings was imperative in the early days of Rotary. And in the early 20s and 30s, the records indicate that the closest club to Ash in, to, it was Ashland, Kentucky, and you had to get there via train. They would leave Pikeville at 6.45 in the morning, and depending on what time the train left Ashland, they would get back to the Big Sandy Valley about 11 p.m. They did this until 1930. This shows the dedication and commitment those men had as Rotarians. During the early years, the meeting and eating, and it was in the records quite often, and quite frankly, it was re written, meeting and eating, was done in the evening at the Jefferson Hotel. When the hotel manager, Ralph Gentry, a Rotarian, left Pikeville, the meetings then took place at the Presbyterian Church, the Methodist, and the Christian churches on a monthly rotation basis. I thought that was interesting that it was a rotation basis again. Later, the club moved to Louis Cafe. Who remembers Louis Cafe? Okay. <coughs> Until the middle of the 60s when the cafe closed. The meetings began at Starlight's Dining Room, which is the bowling alley, at noon on Wednesdays of every week. Now, remember before, I might not have mentioned it, the meetings were held in the evenings. They began meeting during the day in the 60s. I remember this as a Rota meeting the Rotarians in 1973 as a guest honoring the valedictorians and salutatorians of the local high schools, a tradition we continue today. Now I have a picture, and there's another gentleman in the room that's in the picture with me. He's still tall and slender, and I'm still short, and now I'm fat. Rick Bartley. Where are you, Rick? Rick hasn't changed a bit except a little loss of hair and white. But I remember meeting you, if I remember correctly, you went to Johns Creek. Yeah. And we were on the steps of the bowling alley. I still have that picture because Ed Elder took the picture. I must mention several Rotarians that were very vital to this club. Naturally, Norman Christman, who was so instrumental in the organization efforts and lived every minute of the club's existence as an active and dedicated member. Rush Sword. He served as secretary for 20 consecutive years. Ray Hammond, who also served as secretary for many years. And C.C. Cinnamon, who was an integral part of this club. I've told the story some, but I'm going to tell it again. Whenever I was introduced, I was actually invited to the club by Lynette Schindler, and Dr. Mary Wiss ended up proposing me. So Lynette and I, neither one said anything out of honoring Dr. Wiss. But he wanted to check me out, and he did. He came to the Professional Associates building where my practice was and talked to me and made sure that I was okay to be a Rotarian. <laughs> and I could tell you some more, but I won't. He was wonderful as a Rotarian. The contributions of this club are impressive. They sponsored the Pike County Fair for many years. They sponsored and participated in the war bonds. They did a campaign in 1947 where they hired disabled veterans campaign. They established Pancake Day in 1951. Can you imagine how many pancakes have been flipped by Rotarians in 70 years? And as you came through the door, you might not have seen it, but we have a shadow box. I was able to get his apron that he wore all the time, and we have his badge and a picture. But he had to have so many bubbles on your pancakes, and only the men did the pancakes. <laughs> 
uh, the 1957 flood destroyed many of the priceless club records. Despite heavy losses, this club only missed two, two meetings during the 1957 flood. You can't not keep Rotarians down. They co-sponsored the annual 4-H fair and was instrumental in forming the Lonesome Pine Camp Council. This club also chartered Pac-12 of the Boy Scouts of America on October the 31st of 1986, and they helped set up the Girl Scout Camp on Dewey Lake. And I bet I have some men in here that were in that Boy Scout pack in Pikeville. Oh, is there any? Thought maybe there might be. The next 50 years continued with the growth of this club and many service projects. Participating in Hillbilly Days with the fish, with the fish fry for 31 years. And yes, I discontinued it during my year of presidency. <laughs> we continued to support the Shriners Hospital Youth Exchange Program that was in 1980, started in 1980. We sponsored the Prestonsburg Rotary Club. We painted, they did, that was right before, they painted the fences in the city park. Child Safety Highway signs. Participated in Adopt a Highway for Litter Control, and I did that as a young Rotarian. I remember picking up garbage at the mouth of Chloe Creek. Literacy projects, the Redford Dameron Scholarship at the University of Pikeville, the Kenny Huffman Tennis Tournament, Coats for Kids, Remote Area Medical Clinic known as RAM, U Pike Alumni, East Kentucky Strong, Pikeville YMCA, Appalachian Pregnancy Care Center, and many, many more that we just don't have time to mention tonight. Now, for women in Rotary. In 1950, an Indian Rotary Club proposed to the council on legislation an unsuccessful enactment to delete the word male, M-A-L-E, from the standard Rotary Constitution. The United States Supreme Court then ruled in May of 1987 that Rotary Clubs could not exclude women from membership. The decision came toward the end of a decade that marked many firsts for American women including the first woman admitted to the Supreme Court, the first female vice presidential candidate for a major political party, and the first woman to orbit the earth. The same year after the ruling, a female from a Rotary Club in California was sworn in as the first female president of a Rotary Club ever. In 1989, the first meeting since the Supreme Court decision, the Council on Legislation voted to eliminate the requirement that membership be limited to men, permitting clubs worldwide to admit women. As a young Rotarian in 1989, I got to take a weekend trip with my husband to the Bahamas. We went to Nassau, and I was so proud to take the flag, and if you notice, there's a wall of flags, we have more, and it's been a tradition, more so in the past years, but we need to consider that again, where we take our flag from our club when you visit, and you bring a flag from your club. So we went, and we went in the room, and they were looking at me and my husband, and I told them I was Rotarian, and they just looked at me. And he went like that and pointed at me. So we sat down, and they literally fined my husband <laughs> because he wasn't a Rotarian. And being the confident, secure man he is, he just pulled his wallet out and gave him some money. So I won't forget that. He told me not to tell it, but I had to. There were five women installed, and I was very polite. There were five women installed in 1988 and 89 in the Pikeville Rotary Club. Four of these women were supposed to be here tonight. Two of them cannot be. And they have continued to be members since their initiation. Dr. Mary Wiss was the first female, and she was the president of this club in 1994-95, and she passed in 2014. Carrie Cinnamon Rose, she was installed in April of 1988, the first female president of this club in 1992-93, and the first female district governor in 1997-98. Lynette Schindler, stand up. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do that. But anyway, she was installed in 1988, and she served as treasurer for how many years? A long 20? 12? It felt like 20, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and Pamela Howard, installed in March of 1989, past president of this club, 
and Jerry Kinder installed in May 1989 past club president. We will have the first female president of Rotary International, see the sign? In 2022-23, Jennifer Jones. And we have a magazine called The Rotarian, and I was reading it today, and she has a wonderful, wonderful article. I'm keeping that. We know the future of the Fight for Rotary Club is bright. We embrace progress, but we strongly encourage respect for the history of this organization. The Rotary Club of Pipeville will continue to be a positive impact on our community as we can only imagine. Thank you. <clears throat> now at this time I want to give the uh, expressions of uh, disappointment. Jerry Kinder cannot be here with us tonight. She has COVID. She's very disappointed. Carrie Cinnamon cannot be here tonight because she was exposed. They have worked very, very hard to do door prizes, and we have fantastic door prizes, and I suggest strongly that you stay because this is a 100-year anniversary, and there isn't anything that is less than $100 on that table. And we have some after that, so we have a lot of door prizes. As a matter of fact, we have over 40 door prizes. So keep your ticket that we gave you, and again, we miss Carrie and Jerry. Jeff, my buddy Jeff. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Tip your waiters and waitresses. We're here all week. Uh, I'm sorry for the folks who have been exposed uh, to the uh, dreaded disease of COVID. I think you broke every HIPAA law out there, but that's okay. You're not a doctor. Um, I have not been exposed. I don't expose myself. I, don't, I have never been exposed to anything. But I'm going to expose you all to gifts. Mr. President, how are you? Mr. Governor, good to see you. Uh, the first gift is by Debbie Hoffman, a uh, longtime supporter of Rotary and owner of Southside Wine and Spirits on South Mail Trail. Wait, wait a minute, I need numbers. Who's, how am I supposed to do this? What am I supposed to pull? All right, 17443. I'm only kidding. I don't have it. I'll, where's the bucket of numbers? Who's, who's, who's organizing this thing right here? <laughs> Close enough. I don't, listen, I, I need numbers there. Okay. Man, who needs numbers? So the first thing is a, now there's a couple of jokes I, I know. And Rocky says, says, Stephen, thank you so much for, for enlightening us on what, what uh, a Rotary Club is and how we eradicated polio. So very informative. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank, thank God. How's that about a hand for my lovely assistant? The first one is for a bottle of wine. It's some French stuff. It's supposed to be pretty good, so um, I can't pronounce it. It's uh, Le Mistral Vian Vier. It's white wine. Okay, 371105. 1105. Okay, all right, over there. Good job. Uh, the next one is from Justin Newbanks, uh, partner of Texas Roadhouse, celebrating their 10th anniversary. Uh, I'm going to draw two tickets because there's two gifts for four people. 1094. 1094. All righty. That's one. And the second one is going to be 1090. All right. All right. I'm, I want to be your guest. <laughs> the next one is from Economy Drug. It's a $100 gift certificate, and they're a proud supporter of Rotary for over 50 years. Uh, 1067. All right. Jerry Caney's other favorite banker. <laughs> and the fourth one is a $100,000 gift certificate from Jerry Caney's favorite banker. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, the, the next one is from uh, Rotarian Helena Jackson from the H&R Jackson Law Firm. $200 towards the preparation of a will. I don't think that's funny. I think it's true. I think we all need a will. 1056. <laughs> you be quiet. That's a long walk home. Hey, it's a long walk home. You. 
You got to leave Rotary in your will. That's what Seema says. One zero five. Nobody wants to claim this. Nobody wants to die. One zero five six. Who's got the lucky number? Oh, for crying out loud! If this is my number, I'm going home. <laughs> well, hell. <laughs> Hey, bartender, there's more vodka, please. <laughs> Listen, does that mean we get together or what? That's not good. I, all right, I'm going to auction this off. $50. Uh, the last one for right now is uh, from uh, Rotarian Sherry Fouts, uh, CEO of uh, Pikeville Area Family YMCA, three-month membership to the Y. Um, and you get to swim in the pool. And what you, if you're not a good swimmer, Come see me, and you can get the will first. <laughs> then you could swim. You die, you drown, you leave your money to SEMA. Like SEMA needs more money. That ticket is 1070, 1070. All right, there we All right. Hey, listen, uh, eat a dinner. I'll be back in a little while. We have more stuff, more fun, and uh, uh, have fun. Thanks, guys. Thank you for the music. Uh, the food's great. If I could get everyone's attention, we'll move on with our program. And next on our agenda is a pretty exciting thing. We're going to give you a chance to brag. Uh, Larry, I think you've got a microphone somewhere, and uh, he'll roam around. <clears throat> In honor of our 100th anniversary, we opted to do $100 brags. So, Larry is ready. If I have anyone, I feel like I should get Jeff up here as an auctioneer. If I have anyone that is interested in providing a $100 brag, now is the time to do that. Okay, yes, uh, Larry is going to start at the banker's table because we know that uh, <clears throat> that's where all the money is. Uh, Brett's not so fast to jump up right now, are you, Brett? Uh, ah, it's only $100, yeah. <laughs> we do have a $100 brag. Here we go with Dr. Harry Allman. Uh, this is worth $100. Okay. <laughs> now, we're going to give him your full attention because he is certainly paying for this minute. We, well, we... My father was in, uh, he was in Kiwanis when they were in Pikeville. We moved to Pikeville in 1977, just after the flood. And he was a Kiwanian, but he saw the light and <laughs> he ended up, he ended up as a Rotarian not long after they moved from Pikeville. And he and I served as he was president of the Beckley Rotary Club, and I was president of this club the same year. He went on to be governor of the uh, Beckley district of, of Rotary. And I'm just proud to say we shared all that and proud to have been a Rotarian. So Pretty good thank you all. Thank you for your service. We appreciate you as president. You are a legend. That would be something to brag about. Do we have any other $100 brags, Mr. Caney, sitting at the banker table? <laughs> Jerry has a, a $100 brag. I have two $100 brags. That's twice as good. One is for my wife, Linda. Having been unconscious for 60 days, the last eight days she's unconscious and can actually talk. Answer prayer, Jerry. My second brag is for two former employees 
James Glass, past district governor, and Gene Clark, an incoming district governor nominee. So they are here. Two of them. Gene. There's Gene. Two former employees being district governors that is an honor. Again, worthy brags. Do I have any other takers? Brett. <coughs> oh. Okay. Did you get the cash up front? No. Oh. He said I was okay. good. He said I was good for it. Oh. All right. So he's at the banker's table, right? <laughs> but anyway, in case. I don't know if anybody got the news expressed today. The conscience of East Kentucky, as Jeff calls it. But anyway. He's working on his wheel. Yeah. <laughs> That's my kid in there for hitting the Grand Slam <laughs> on Thursday. Oh, way to go. Again, worth $100. Grand Slam. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Rakesh. My brag is on uh, my spouse and partner Seema, who is going to be our incoming district governor. And I want to thank our club, our friends, and uh, several past district governors who've come here to support her. And thank you for your friendship and your support, and I'm sure Seema will do a great job leading our district. I'm sure. <laughs> Any other takers? Oh, can You're doing well, eh? I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I'm going to kind of make it two brags. First one is on a local nonprofit organization that I won't mention the name because I can't afford to pay a fine and a hundred dollar brag. That's right. uh, <clears throat> but they um, recently had a lot of students in. I realized I needed some help. I called out for some help in my Rotary family. We needed some cornhole boards. I had five cornhole boards actually delivered to me by Rotarians or their companies when I needed them and it was less than 24 hours notice, so big brag on everybody for helping me that out with that. Rotarians also helped with the extracurricular activities that I had for these students. And, and the most part of my brag is on my poor brother who gets <laughs> stuck having to help me with everything. And you see who we got here helping us tonight? <laughs> and I'm not, no offense, Larry. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kevin. We know you do a lot for us. You know the brags? Good. We have done well. Uh, in, in the interest of, you know, giving everybody an opportunity to brag, we'll drop the cost from $100 to whatever you want to pay. If you want to continue to brag and throw something out there that you want to brag about, uh, just whatever you feel comfortable with. Frank, you have something to brag about? Okay, yeah, Frank. Frank did not know I was going to do that. He was not waiting on this. He just, you know, it's one of those worthy brags. I'll, get, I'll do a ten dollar brag. A ten dollar brag. And it, which it's two five dollar brags. Okay, two five dollar brags. Okay. So first is uh, my beautiful bride and I have been married now as of yesterday for thirty five years. So and then MCAT scores came out today and my son got over a five hundred, so we're pumped about that. Oh, that could be worth a hundred dollars. Any two good brags? Anyone else like to brag about something? Larry has a bucket and a microphone and got to talk. Oh, we have a we do. Yes, just giving Larry some exercise. You waited till he got on that side of the room and then the volunteer. Let's go, Speedy. Oh, try, try. Lynette. We'll get Lynette first, Jay. Yeah. I couldn't afford 100, but I can afford 50. Oh, well. <laughs> 
today is our 53rd wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. Way to go, Jean. Huh. If, if Gene were only a member, we'd find him for not bragging. <laughs> okay, Jay. So I'll throw 50 in there, and I'll brag that as of yesterday, I was with a certain company for 12 or 11 years, and uh, I was uh, very fortunate to be there, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. They've made a great choice. Anyone else? Going once? Going twice? Thank you all for your brags. Thank you for co your contributions, and uh, they will be used wisely. Actually, I, I have a list of things that we have done in the past year that I'd like to share with you. Uh, contributions that we have made, monies that we have uh, distributed throughout our community, and it's events like this, it's your brags, it's um, your contributions, a lot of you have um, contributed to Rotary over the past year and given us an opportunity to do some things that we wanted to do, just to name a few, I think Pam actually named a few, but we did uh, $2,500 to the Redford Dameron Scholarship Fund, we've done uh, $2,500 to the YMCA for the, the construction of the pool the past year, $1,000 to the Pregnancy Center. $1,000 to Coats for Kids, um, $1,000 to the 4-H organization this year. We had, we were very fortunate to have three foundation grants this year, and that uh, enabled us to do a $3,000 uh, swim lessons at the YMCA. That's for preschool kids, uh, teaching those youngsters to swim. Uh, we also did $7,000 worth of uh, empowering girls. We did the conference here, invited ninth grade girls in, and we spent 7000 You know, I got to say that I was a little uncomfortable during that whole thing. I was the only guy in a room full of uh, 300 ninth grade girls along with. Um, I didn't last long, I got to tell you. But it was a great, it was a great program, and we spent $7,000 on that. $8,200 we spent on the uh, nursing home Christmas drive and we visited each of the nursing homes in the county and gave gifts to each of the uh, individuals at those, uh, in those nursing homes. We also did Christmas drives with the state police, a variety of other things. $1,800 to tornado relief, uh, $3,700 to Ukraine relief. Uh, collectively, this past year, and I was very proud and, and very impressed that we were able to do this, but it was again through your kindness and through the contributions that were made and the fundraisers that we did, we were able to distribute $35,356 to this community for uh, different, different things. That was, uh, we got off to a slow start too. We didn't make the first contribution until sometime in September. We, you know, it was a slow year because um, COVID, last year we didn't have a chance to meet in person, so we didn't do a lot of fundraising the past couple of years. So uh, we started slow, but we really came on strong. It was a, it was a great year. And one of, the, one of the things that I enjoyed most, is I noticed, and of course, people like you more when you give them money. Did you notice that, Mark? Uh, I just was more popular, so uh, I appreciate your helping me and making me look a little better anyway. I have a lot of people to uh, thank for their service this year, and uh, I've come up with some awards that I'd like to share with you. Uh, there are a couple of people that I had awards for that aren't here, and I want to mention Howard Roberts, one of them. We, we, he has a special award for his service over the years to uh, not only this club, but um, his profession and the community. Uh, but I do have some awards for those people that are here tonight, and I will begin with the first award that I'd like to present uh, for the year, and, and I'd like for you to come forward and allow me to personally present that to you. I have a Service Above Self Award that I'm going to give to a, a young lady that uh, worked uh, tirelessly throughout the year to uh, 
helped coordinate a number of events. Uh, she, um, <clears throat> she actually invited us into her home on a number of occasions and fed us some really good Indian food. I, I became a fan. Uh, I think I helped her in terms of her culinary abilities because uh, I enjoyed all those meals and I was uh, not above bragging on them. So, Seema, Seema, if you come forward, I'd like to give you a service of myself award. A uh, couple of club service awards that I'd like to present to uh, individuals that spent a lot of time behind the scenes making sure that things worked uh, throughout the year with the club. Um, Jerry Clark and Eva Stewart, if you would come up, please. I would like to appreciate what you have done. They made my job so much easier, and I sure do appreciate them. <clears throat> a Distinguished Service Award. Again, I give these awards because it made my job so much easier. Uh, the, uh, you know, every, every week we, we meet with Rotary 52 times in the course of the year, and it seems like uh, our members expect a good program every week out of those 52 weeks, and uh, that's a, a, a good deal of stress when you have to think about entertaining, informative uh, programs. And uh, I think this year we've, we've had some really great programs. Uh, we start with Mitch McConnell all the way, you know, just through so many, so many different people. And it was uh, a relief for me not to worry so much about who was going to be there or if we were going to have a quality program. And, and uh, a lot of people, we had, a, we had a committee, a lot of people helped make sure that we had those programs, and we had one person that kind of coordinated that, and I think that service is uh, distinguished, and I want to give Rakesh Steva an award for that. I have. You know, we set a goal at the beginning of the year. This is our 100th year, and, and we wanted, one of my goals when I started was to have 100 members at the end of this year, and we came really close. We had a great membership committee, and we had one individual that worked tirelessly to uh, make sure that we got as close to 100 as we could, and I want to give a club membership award to Jay Caney. Oh yeah, we, in terms of membership, we did get a, a number of new members this year, and we were we got some great members. We're really proud, and some of them uh, 
just jumped in with both feet as if they had been members of Rotary for a long time and got involved in everything, and I thought it would be an appropriate uh, award to give a Rookie of the Year. And the Rookie of the Year award, I think, should go to Terry Walters. We had a, a lot of great rookies. It takes a while to get into all this, but she just jumped in with both feet. Thanks, Terry. Behind the scenes, a lot of things uh, happen that we don't always know about. So we have a quiet Rotarian Award. There's an individual that was involved in a lot of things. Whenever we needed him, he was there. Uh, if I needed somebody to take up uh, money on $100 brags, he was there. Larry Miller, quiet Rotarian Award. I've got a club secretary. We couldn't do anything without the club secretary. She's been, uh, she just wears all kinds of hats, does so much, she even gets her brother involved. Karen, club secretary award, great job, great year. We appreciate you so much. people worked really hard this year. I don't know if it was because they wanted to. You know, our, our slogan this year was uh, had to do with service, but uh, I, and it could have been me. They recognized that, uh, you know, they were going to have to step up a notch if we were going to get through this year, and, and they certainly did. And one person particularly stepped up a lot of notches. She was involved in everything that we did. Uh, it's amazing all the things that um, she did for us. Uh, and uh, I appreciate her so much. She was afraid to step out of board meetings because she was afraid if she was out of the room, she'd get volunteered for something else. But she did a great job on everything that she was involved in. The Rotarian of the Year, Shelley Justice Fouts. I didn't do this one, but it's even bigger than me. That's why I didn't do it. It's a district award, uh, a district award for a program that uh, was done this year. The uh, Empowering Women and Empowering Girls was a, a global focus, and uh, Seema took the reins and, and started. And she did a grant, and... Uh, through that grant, we got started here. The grant didn't pay enough, so we got, of course, Jay was a great fundraiser. We got other monies that uh, we were able to contribute, and uh, she uh, coordinated a program for 300 ninth graders. Now, if you've ever been in education, and I was there for a while, remember ninth graders? Uh, ninth graders are an interesting crew, and, and ninth grade girls are even a little more interesting. Uh, I, again, I, I was very uneasy for all, that whole day, actually, but she invited 300 uh, ninth grade girls into this facility, and she and her committee coordinated a, a great program, and, and it was one of the better programs that uh, I'd ever been involved in. And so I didn't have to give an award because the district recognized the importance of that program, and they have presented to SEMA an empowering girls initiative award.
Well, thank you. I just want to say a few words because there are some non-Rotarians here. Um, so I just got the award because I chaired the, the committee. But it was really our club that did it. And when I made the final report, I had counted 215 volunteer hours between all us Rotarians and a non-Rotarian, Kevin, too. <laughs> I should have counted his hours, too. But so it was all a team effort, but I was just there to receive it on your behalf. So thank you. Somebody had to write the grant. Uh, <laughs> it was a great idea, and it was a great program. Again, one of the better programs that I've been associated with. I think that's it for me for a while. Uh, Pam is going to introduce our next speaker, and um, I'm certainly anxious to hear Pam's introduction and our speaker. I'll just stretch. That's fine. Okay, thank you very much. First, before we go on, I'd like to recognize Food City prepared the floral arrangements and the cake. Tim Collins has been so good to this club. Saw him today, thanked him, but I want everyone here to know how good Tim is to us. And Julie Goff in the Swag Tones, you're fantastic. Thank you. We appreciate you very much. And Larry Epling, our photographer. And I would like to introduce the gentleman. He was, came tonight. I'm very appreciative. Rakesh and Seema are really responsible for getting him here. I was asking, and they had the connection to talk to Ed Stiles. Ed came to Pikeville for the University of Pikeville uh, Osteopathic Program. I remember that well since I am a physical therapist. We understand each other's discipline. He became a Rotarian, and he can tell you, and I titled it Rotary My Journey, Mr. Ed Stiles. I can't say the proper name because I'll be fined. Keep me in line here. No, I uh, joined um, Rotary in 1969. I came in as an additional active as an osteopathic physician at the Cambridge um, Massachusetts Rotary Club, which was an interesting club to be a member of because many of the members were faculty and staff members of Harvard, Ratliff, MIT, and the uh, business community. And um, it was, um, as I came in, um, I was probably the youngest member by 30 years of age because it was a good old boys club. And at the dinner table, the biggest discussion at that time was, should women be allowed into Rotary? <laughs> so I've been there. I saw that all, um, all develop. And then I, um, uh, that was a, a, a singing club. And uh, some clubs are, some aren't, but that was a, a big singing club. Their main, their idea of a fundraiser was, you get your checkbook out and wrote a check. And... Um, we lived in the suburbs of Belmont, Mass., which was part of, had been part of Cambridge and separated out. And it was a bedroom community that was very interesting because you had, again, a lot of great speakers. And in Belmont, some of the speakers that were available to us were like Henry Kissinger and, and Robert Welch, the founder of the John Birch Society, and, and a lawyer that was a, um, an authority on Lockman Ness Monster. So we had some interest. And at that Belmont club, it was an evening club. And we had a member that played the piano. And people told the story about he would be invited to come to a, like a meeting or a wedding or whatever. He'd walk in with no music and say, what decade do you want me to play songs from? From the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s? He would sit down and play all night without music. And so he played dinner music for us as we uh, ate our dinner and then had our, sang our songs and then had our meeting. Then in 1973, I moved to Waterville, Maine, and was invited into the Rotary Club there. And that was the home of Colby College, so again, you had a lot of neat speakers. And um, our original fundraiser was a radio auction, which was an interesting activity. 
And then they switched to a 4th of July celebration at the local airport, which raised a, um, a lot of money. But Rotary was great at that time because I was going in to start a new hospital program and it gave me a chance to talk to the business people of the community and let them become aware of what, was, uh, what we were doing. Then in 1978, we moved to Norman, Oklahoma, the home of the University of Oklahoma. And that's when I became a Sooner fan. And uh, that was a singing club. And the fellow that led the singing was Gene Turkell, who was the director of the OU marching band. And uh, so we had some pretty good uh, sing singing sessions at that club. That, um, as I was a member there, a young fellow joined several years after I joined, um, a fellow named Ron Burton, who became um, a member of the International Board and a president of Rotary International and who Rakesh knows very well. But I remember him coming in as a young lad and uh, ended up as uh, the head of Rotary. Uh, the other thing was, I'm reminded of it tonight, we had a woman astronaut in uh, our uh, club. And she insisted on, on doing the Pledge of Allegiance every week. And she insisted that it be done properly. And what she said is, one nation under God. Then it goes on. She said it should be all one thing, one nation under God. There should be no pause there. And she insisted that it always be said. And I, 40 years later, I'm still saying it the same way. The main fundraiser we had there was we had a, a, a member that owned a trucking business. And he sent 18 wheel trucks to, to uh, Texas to pick or get ripe fruit that had just been picked. So grapefruit and oranges, and then we sold that at, uh, at Christmas time. And we raised a lot of money with that, um, that fundraiser. The other fundraiser was there was a coaches, uh, football coaches luncheon, the last Thursday of um, every September getting ready for the football season. So every year you'd get a chance to hear Barry Switzer brag about what the Sooners were going to be doing and various coaches come in and one year the the speaker was Larry Lacewell who was one of the greatest defensive coordinators Oklahoma ever had and for several years he just had fabulous defensive teams and after his presentation there was a question answer period and someone raised their hand and said coach Lacewell what do you give credit for what what knowledge did you have or what skills did you have that enabled you to become such a great defensive coordinator and it showed that he really understood what was going on because he said, Mrs. Selman, because the three Selman brothers were um, all-American offensive defensive linemen at Oklahoma for a number of years. They all went to the pros and all became all pros. So he had it right. It was Mrs. Selman that made him successful. Then in 1979, came to Pikeville. And um, Chuck Chrisman and Bill Owens were the people that, that uh, introduced me to Rotary here and sponsored me into the club. And it was a great opportunity because a lot of people were skeptical about what we were about, what we were coming in doing, and what was the difference between osteopathic medicine and traditional medicine. And, and at the table that I sat at frequently, C.C. Cinnamon, how many remember C.C.? We had some pretty vigorous discussions about the difference in approaches to medicine and the advantages and disadvantages. And um, he, as many of you know, he suddenly dropped dead in his pharmacy. And um, the next fall, our incoming class, there was a student called Cade Cinnamon. And I went to Cade and said, uh, any connection? And he said, oh yeah, that was my dad. And he said, you know, he told me that if I got accepted to UK or U of L to come to Pikeville. So I thought, oh, all those discussions, vigorous discussions at the table with CC were worth it. And uh, so then now he's a Navy surgeon, as many of you, uh, many of you know. The, um, my biggest regret about Rotary here was that uh, my schedule at the school is I have to be in labs from in Wednesdays from 8 in the morning to 11.50 and then from 1 to 4.50. So that kind of eliminates a noon meeting for me getting to uh, Rotary on a regular basis. So I've regretted that I haven't been able to participate as much as, um, as I would have liked to. But it's, uh, I've really enjoyed my time at the Rotary Club here. But the other thing that I've really enjoyed about Rotary, because in my career I've done a lot of both national and international lecturing and teaching, and it's so neat to be in a foreign city and in a hotel, say, where your meeting is being held, 
and see that there's going to be a Rotary Club meeting that week. And to be able to walk into a Rotary Club meeting where you can't speak any language of the people in that, uh, in that room, yet there's an immediate rapport. And the other thing I found is neat is walking through airports, being stopped because somebody see your rotary pin or you see theirs and stop them and have a brief discussion about rotary. So rotary has been very good to me. It's been an interesting, so I've been a member now for 53 years and it hit me this week to realize the 100th anniversary, I've been a member of rotary over half of that time. Thank you. So we have some Paul Harris recognition to do tonight. Paul Harris Fellow Recognition is named after Paul Harris, who founded Rotary with three business associates in Chicago in 1905. Paul Harris' presentation was established in his honor in 1957 to express appreciation for a contribution of 1,000 US dollars to the humanitarian and educational programs of the Rotary Foundation. Those programs include an array of projects that save and invigorate the lives of people around the world and enhance international friendship and understanding. Foundation programs provide educational opportunities, food, portable water, healthcare, immunizations, and shelter for millions of persons. These activities of seven avenues of service are funded, implemented, and managed by Rotarians and Rotary Clubs around the world. I would like the following Rotarians to please come up on the stage. Well, Kerry Cinnamon's not with us today, nor is Jerry Kinder, nor is Bob Shirtler. Uh, I think we have James Brown, David Lester, Pamela Howard, Betty Francisco, Eva Stewart, Helena Jackson, and I don't believe Michael Peck is with us today. Well, while they are making their way up to the stage, I'd like to give a big shout out to our chair of uh, Rotary Foundation, of Pikeville Rotary Club, that is Frank Daher. Where's Frank? That's it's right there. Um, he did a tremendous job inspiring and motivating Rotarians to donate to the foundation at a big fundraiser that we had just about two weeks ago. So um, I'm going to tell you. Uh, they have all donated in the past, and as you keep adding your $1,000, your Paul Harris recognition keeps going up. So Jerry Kinder recently became a Paul Harris Fellow plus four, Bob Shirtler plus three, James Brown plus three, David Lester plus two, Pamela Howard plus one, Betty Francisco plus one, Eva Stewart plus one, and Helena Jackson plus one. Now, unfortunately, their pins haven't made it to Pikeville yet. They're on their way. We're going to blame it on USPS. But we will award it to them when they come here. But we do want to recognize them for their selfless, truly selfless contribution and service above self to the foundation. Thank you. I'd like you to all please stay here. Now, Rotarians can also designate a Paul Harris Fellow to recognize another person whose life demonstrates a shared purpose with the objectives and mission of the Rotary Foundation. I'd like to request Lori Wirtz, Provost of the University of Pikeville, to please join me on stage. We would have loved to have David Hutchins with us today, but he could not be here, so on his behalf, I would invite our president, uh, Burton Webb, to please join us on the stage. In the words of UPIKE's 21st president, Dr. Burton Webb, Discussing his successes, challenges, and future plans, he said, and I quote, I have a great team. I try to inspire others, be honest, and have integrity in everything I do. But beyond it, it is all of us pulling in the same direction to get things done. We are all very proud of the success of the University of Pikeville 
and the transformative single largest gift of $25 million for the establishment of School of Dental Medicine here in Pikeville. The gift was made possible by the leadership of David Hutchins. The academic transformation and implement implementation of many innovative programs at the university has been led by the provost, Dr. Lori Wirth. David Hutchins and Lori Wirth, you are being recognized today as Paul Harris Fellows in special appreciation for the ways in which your life exemplifies the humanitarian and educational objectives of the Rotary Foundation. It is with great pleasure that Rakesh and I designate you both to receive this recognition. We cherish you as our dear friends and now as Paul Harris Fellows. And Dr. Webb, will you please kindly receive it on behalf of David Hutchins. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to request Kevin Prater to please join us on the stage. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's Ke it's Kevin Prater's brother, but he is Kevin Roberts. So in my head, he's Kevin Prater. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So according to Mother Teresa, the greatest good is what we do for one another. Kevin's life exemplifies selfless volunteerism. He's well known at Pikeville Rotary Club, remember, not as a fellow Rotarian, but as a volunteer who passionately devotes endless hours for all causes and projects of the Pikeville Rotary Club. He goes above and beyond, behind the scenes of all our events, including today. He serves as the Director of Special Events at the Appalachian Wireless Arena. Kevin, you are being designated to receive this honor by your sister, Rotarian Karen Robert Prater. <laughs> yeah. We urge you all to wear your Paul Harris Fellow pin with pride to all Rotary events and community events as a symbol of your appreciation for and support for the programs of the Rotary Foundation. Rotarians and friends, please congratulate and recognize our newest Paul Harris Fellows. James Brown. I, I could have said something before you sat down, but uh, James and I are here to recognize the continuous years of service in Rotary by our fellow Rotarians. James. We recognize the following people for 50 years plus in the Rotary Club. Ed Stiles and Bill Maynard, 50 years. I'm recognizing the folks that have 40 to 50 years of continuous service in the Rotary Club. Jodine Anderson, 42 years. Mayo Clark, 43 years. And I'm telling you, this one's hard to believe, but Daryl Maynard, 40 years. I thought he was only 50, so I don't know. And Gary Justice, 40 years. 
following people that have been 30 to 40 years, Jerry Canney, Kelly Moore, Lynette Schindler, Jerry, Carrie Cinnamon Rose, Pamela Hard, Frank Daher, and Jerry Kendrick. Twenty to thirty years. James Brown. James Glass. Brenda Maynard. Rakesh Sachdeva. Marquita Blackburn. Shirley Blackburn. Betty Francisco. J.B. Gillum. Dick Jarvis. Sharon Hall. Brett King. Rick Newsom. A.O. Onks. Reed Potter. Denny Rohr, James Sullivan, Jeff Vanderbeck, Robert Williams, and John Yagadich, Yogi. Thank you. I'd like to share a little something with you. I went to my first Rotary Club meeting in 1955. It was at Louis Cafe. I was a young 4 H'er giving a demonstration on how to refurnish furniture. Never thought about ever being a member at that time. Now we have more door prizes, but first, before I get started, there's a couple things I'd like to talk about. Let's give a warm, you know, the, 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 those, those wacky folks at the Supreme Court, they allowed women to become members of the Rotary Club. So let's give those wacky Supreme Court justices a round of applause for having you women come on board. I love you all. And my new attorney is going to file a petition in judge, the judge's court right here because I demand a recount. I missed out on the quiet Rotarian by probably one vote. I want to recount. My lawyer will be filing that petition. So there. All right, next uh, uh, thing is going to be. Uh, Jerry Bishop, owner of Men's Corner, gave a $100 gift certificate. So here's a gift certificate for $100 to that. Uh, 1119. Oh, you can use that, Helen. Get yourself something nice. <laughs> All right, uh, Heather McPeak of Southern Bliss Women's Boutique at South Mail Trail has a $100 gift certificate. James Brown, if you get this, there's, there's, a, there's karma in the universe. Um, uh, 1082, 1082. All righty, the young lady right here, you get to have some nice shirts and clothing. Uh, the next one is, is, is a very good prize. It's from uh, this Rotarian, Jeff Vanderbeck, and it's, um, the, he's the publisher of the, the Conscious of Eastern Kentucky. I'm allowed to say it because I'm allowed to do this without getting fined, and if I find, Pam said she'd pay it. It's a one-year subscription to the News Express, and that goes to 1118. <laughs> All right, James Brown. Next one, uh, Lortarian Larry Miller, Assistant General Manager of the, of the arena here, has two or lower arena seats to the British American Rock Band concert for a foreigner in August. And uh, uh, Governor Patton, I hope you win this one. Eleven oh eight. Wrong number. Well, eleven oh eight. You got it. There you go. And the last one for now, I'll be back two more times, so please hold your applause for me. And hold your, your standing ovation for me later can come later, I promise you. Jerry, I, I'm going to need your help with that. But for, for the next one is going to be a Lowe's Craftsman Power Drill valued at $100. That goes to 1081. You've got to be kidding me. All right, that's a family affair over there. 1081. All right, thank you guys. I'll be back in uh, five or ten minutes. Help yourselves to the conference.
I've been asked to talk about the past district governors from the Pikeville Rotary Club. I'm getting up in a little bit of age because I know or knew five of the six of these people. I did not know A.A. A. Page, president of Pikeville College from 1949 to 1950 is our first district governor. The following people I have known or do know. Redford Dameron, president of Pikeville College, 80, 86 to 87. C.C. Cinnamon, 88 to 89. Carrie Cinnamon, 97 to 98. Would you please stand that man right there? <laughs> Rakesh Satchdeva, one of my closest friends, 2008, 2009. Let's give him a round of applause now. Not here tonight is James Glass, 2020-2021. Rotary, as I mentioned earlier, has two official mottos. Number one, service above self. Number two is one profits who serves best. So. We are proud to have had these district governors come from the Pikeville Rotary Club. Amen. And moving right along, it's my pleasure. Where'd he go? Eddie, Eddie Coleman. You come up to do the installation of our officers and our board. Eddie has been a Rotarian for a long time, I think 19 years. You barely missed the 20. And, uh, we're, and we're so honored that he does this for our club every year. And I thank you, Eddie Coleman. It was, our, it was ironic that I've been a member for 19 years. They, the cutoff was at 20, so. But I've been doing this, I've been fumbling through this particular uh, thing for the last 19 years, and I do appreciate taking this, taking part in at least this thing in Rotary, and uh, I've enjoyed it so much that I've, that I've uh, I signed up for another eight years as circuit judge just so I could keep doing this particular thing. So it's worked out pretty good. So last December, there's a long there's a long period for Rotary. You know, like you elect the president in November and they take office in January. But we elected these people in December and they take office in July. There's a long transition period. I'm I'm sure that I'm not sure what they do because I've never been an officer, but apparently it takes a lot of preparation. And uh, we're, uh, <laughs> but they do, uh, they do spend a lot of time doing this. They, uh, they uh, you know, as Jerry said, our motto is service above self. And these people, because they're willing to uh, participate and take part of this and give up their time, we appreciate it. Uh, Rotary, you know, Dr. Satchdeva keeps us informed about polio and uh, all the, the water things that we do throughout the world. And, and when Francis and I are on vacation, I'm sure many of you, you go to a town or Caribbean island, there's always a bench, a park. There's always something that has a rotary symbol on it where those local Rotarians have uh, donated their time and money to help their community. And uh, I'm proud to be a Rotarian. And so let's do the installation of officers. And we'll start off with the, the board, the directors. And we have Shelly, Jordan, Pamela, 
Karen, Seema, and Robert. And I don't have me. I didn't see Robert Williams here earlier. Is he here? Well, good. Robert's a great addition. You know, Robert moved from Hazard to Pikeville within 20, within two weeks. He knew everybody in town. So, and it doesn't matter where you take him. He knows everybody there. So he's a great he's a great asset to our club. Y'all come on up. Shelly, then we got Jordan Gibson. I haven't seen him. He's not here. Pam Howard's here. And uh, we've got Karen and Seema and Robert. Okay. And I'm not sure if this is the proper way to do it. I think they're going to install Seema, and that will probably be done properly. But this is just the way I do it. And uh, we'll just do what we'll just. And I'm used to swearing people in, so we swear them. Okay. Where y'all going? Have you swear or affirm that you will serve as director for Rotary Year 2022-2023, faithfully executing to the best of your ability the duties of this office by serving as the governing unit for our club, and along with the president, president elect, and other officers, providing full governance for this club, making decisions related to club matters that shall be final, subject only to an appeal to the club as a whole required by the Constitution bylaws at uh, Rotary Club of Pikeville and Rotary Internet. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll swear in the new Sergeant of Arms, Mayo Clark. And uh, Mayo, as you've heard, I'm not really sure that he has 40-some years in Rotary because he usually leaves right after lunch. <laughs> I think if you count his actual time, it's probably like 20. So <laughs> yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm that you will serve as Sergeant of Arms for our club during the Rotary year 22-23, faithfully executing to the best of your ability the duties of this office by preparing the meeting room and assisting the presiding officer during the meetings as he may direct as required by the laws of Rotary Club of Pikeville and Rotary International. Good. <laughs> then we have the the secretary and treasurer. And this year we got a new secretary. And uh, Karen, come on up. And then we got Eva. We're going to swear her in. Which is the other Karen? I said we had a new, we had a new secretary. I said Karen. So anyway, Karen, huh? You know, I thought I'd proofread this, but <laughs> Miss Jackson reminds me of the first Mary Tyler Moore show because, because she reminds me when Lou Grant told her, Mary Tyler Moore, you have a lot of spunk. <laughs> but unlike Lou Grant, we actually like spunk. And, and, uh, she will be a great asset to our club, and uh, we're very happy to have her. And Eva is uh, always working and doing stuff for our club. And I do re need to remind her, as treasurer, that I've got 19 years in, and I'm 66 years old. <laughs> From now on, I want, to be, I want my discount. It's a rule of 85. Okay? Don't forget that. Okay, ladies, do each of you swear or affirm that you as the treasurer and secretary of our club for the Rotary year 2022-2023, faithfully executing to the best of your ability the duties of these offices by keeping and controlling the records and financial transactions as required by Rotary Club 
of Foxhole and Rotary International. Okay, good deal. We have a president, a president-elect, a president nominee, and then a couple years ago they added a president nominee nominee, which, uh, which uh, the transition is very important to the Papa Rotary Club. So we got no. I will combine the two nominee offices. So if Novella and Karen, this is actually Karen, right? Okay. So if Novella and Karen will come up, we'll do this. We'll do the nominee, president nominees. No, Novella is not here. Okay, we're we're not saving you any time after all. Do <laughs> you swear or affirm to serve as president nominee nominee for the Papa Rotary Club for the year 2022 20, 2023, faithfully executing to the best of your ability the duties of that office? by presiding at club meetings and board director meetings in the absence of the president, president elect, president nominee, and perform other duties that ordinarily pertain to that office as required by our laws and regulations of the Rotary Club of Pikeville and Rotary International. Okay. Then they, then we got Brent, who's going to be our president elect, and uh, he's a very nice man. I really, I really don't have anything funny to say about him. He's got a nice family. Think about uh, Katie's favorite banker, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Do you swear or affirm to serve as the president elect of the Papa Rotary Club for the year 2022, 2023? faithfully executing to the best of your ability the duties of that office by presiding at club meetings and board director meetings in the absence of the president to perform other duties that ordinarily pertain to that office as required by our Constitution, bylaws, and regulations. I do. Okay. That's a handful, right? It is. You know, unlike, unlike the oaths that the attorneys here have taken, and like Mr. Bartley and I have taken as office holders, and Philip, our, we do not have to swear that we've never taken part in a duel by deadly weapon. So, <laughs> it's a, so, it's, so we, so we do have an escape clause. Kay, come on up. Kay, I'm familiar with Kay because she, because she has been the permanent president of the Pikeville or University of Pikeville uh, alumni board. And, uh, but in this office, she can only serve one year, okay? <laughs> Great. Okay. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to serve as president of our club for the year 22-23, thankful executing to the best of your ability the duties of this office by signing our club and board of directors meetings and perform all other duties that ordinarily pertain to the office of president as required by the Constitution, bylaws, and regulations of the Rotary Club of Pikeville and Rotary International. I do. That concludes my part of the program, and we hope uh, all these people do well in their jobs and uh, keep our club going strong. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. You did a lot of swearing, and we both have that in common. Um, I, I feel like Eric Kahn. I, 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 I'm, I never left. So I got more stuff to give out to people. Get your tickets out. And I've been, listen, I've been, people have been trying to bribe me with money to win something. 
I don't see nothing. It's like I got nothing in this hand, I got nothing in that hand, but I got lots of these in this hand. So when I start seeing some greenbacks, people will get nominated. All right, Pikeville Medical Center, a multifaceted, well, they gave me this whole thing. Like nobody knows what Pikeville Medical Center is. Listen, you're gonna get a nice gift basket from Pikeville Medical Center because they do some great stuff here. And if you don't know who Pikeville Medical Center is, then you know what, you need to go to Hazard or something. All right, number 1076, 1076. Nothing wrong with Hazard, but come on. All right, go to uh, 1076, who are we? All righty, thank you, thanks for playing. All right, the next one, uh, the Food City since 1960. Again, if you don't know where Food City is, you don't need to belong here. But they've been a long player, a strong supporter of Rotary. We got a $100 gift certificate, and I'll meet you in the beer aisle for half of that. Uh, 1062, 1062, which is actually my birthday. Rocky and I are a year apart, so congratulations to us. Who got 1062? All right, Sharon, we'll see you in about an hour. Uh, next one, again, Larry Miller, the quiet guy, uh, uh, gives uh, tickets to ZZ Top. Governor Patton, let's hope you got the number. I know, I know you can go do the bow, 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 brother. All right, 1086, 1086. Oh, the mayor and his wife. Woo! No, we're going to be rocking that out. He gets free tickets anyway. Uh, Shelly Fouts, uh, okay, so Shelly Fouts is going to give a three-month membership to, I don't know, it's just Michael, Michael Pack and Ron something. I don't know what that means, but let's hear it for the boys. Um, let's do the three-month membership to the, to the YMCA on behalf of Shelly. Uh, 1071, 1071. All righty, I want to see you on the track on Monday morning. 1071, I want to see you do the breaststroke. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, what do I got to do? I didn't get there. You're, you're jumping the thing. Who do you think you are, Jerry Caney? All right. The next one is Michael Pack, $200 towards legal fees. Listen, I don't know what's going on with all these legal attorneys around here. But I'm going to die and somebody's going to get out of jail real soon. Let's get 11-12, uh, 11-12, 1112. All right, you need that, Dr. Ahmed. You need all the legal help you can get your hands on. All right, uh, so David Lester is going to give his outgoing remarks as president. And then, like Eric Kahn, I'll be back and I'll see you in a few. Thanks. Uh, no, wait, sit back down, Mr. Mr. President. We got to, she's got, listen, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> He's getting a little excited. We are now going to install our next district governor. Again, and Carrie Cinema couldn't be here, and she's uh, very sad about that. But past district governor uh, is Del Elifritz. If you'll come up and install Seema Sachdeva. Well, good evening. There is a little fortuity about this. Carrie Cinnamon and I are in the same district governor class, 97, 98. Hence, if you see her or her district governor coat on, it will look just like this one. So, um, thank you for this great evening. Uh, thank you for the, uh, all of you who are visiting here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come and install our next district governor. And thank you for your presence to witness this installation. <coughs> District Governor Elect Seema. Step uh, sit over here where I can talk in the microphone because I'm a little hoarse. Uh, many are called to leadership positions in Rotary, but only 529 Rotarians worldwide have been elect chosen to accept the responsibilities of being a district governor for the Rotary year 2022-2023. You are one of those 523. Congratulations on that. <laughs> 
So you will be part of that team that leads this 1.4 million Rotarians worldwide in, what, 200 countries? I don't remember how many clubs now, but 40,000, something like that. So you're, you're one of that, that group. As district governor-elect, your proven leadership skills and decision-making skills will be most important to the future of the district 6740 and to the future of Rotary. During your time in office, Rotarians and Rotary clubs will look to you for leadership, support, motivation as they carry out service projects and participate in Rotary programs. Clubs and Rotarians will look to you for leadership in supporting our Rotary Foundation, polio eradication, disaster relief, and other programs as well as the regular operations of their clubs. Therefore, SEMA, do you accept these responsibilities? If so, please say yes. yes. Do you, to the best of your ability, pledge to support the ideals of Rotary and motivate Rotarians and Rotary clubs to participate in service above self, support of our Rotary Foundation, support to the eradication of polio worldwide and to other humani humanitarian programs. If you, if you do, please say, I do. I do. To the Rotarians in this room and the friends of Rotary in this room, do you pledge your undivided support to SEMA as she becomes the governor of District 6740 for the ensuing year? If so, please answer in unison, yes, we pledge our support. Yes, we pledge our support. SEMA? I announce and welcome you as our next district governor. Congratulations. Now, there are two more little bits to this. Rakesh, will you come up here? I don't think Rakesh knew I was going to pull this on him. As a symbol of your wife's district governorship, will you affix that pin on SEMA? <laughs> That's why he's doing it, not me. <laughs> now, there is a tradition in this district of a briefcase that was donated for the use of the district governor by a Rotarian from the Lexington Rotary Club in 1972. Well, this briefcase has come and gone. There have been some district governors who wish it would go, but it has reappeared courtesy of Jeannie. So I present you with the district governor's briefcase. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Best of wishes. And thank you all. Thank you. you bet. Sure thing. I can never tell when you're kidding around. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Seema, oh, there she is. Congratulations, Seema. We've been very blessed in our club to uh, have had a number of district governors, and uh, this will be another one. You know, it's been a great year for me. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this office, and I've enjoyed uh, becoming more involved with our club. It's, it's a great club. I've been a member, Eddie, as you have for 19 years. I'm looking forward to next year, too. Uh, we can do 20, and we'll celebrate uh, together. But in, in those years, uh, we've had a lot of really uh, quality officers. Uh, we've had a lot of great leadership, and we've had a, a great club. Uh, I think uh, I'm very fortunate because this club has supported me in every way this year, and, and I think that's, I think I've had a successful presidency, but it's because of the support that you all have given me. And uh, serve to change lives is, was our motto, and, and uh, I think whenever I needed someone to serve, there were always a number of people that volunteered to do that. And for that reason, we've had a great year. And uh, I appreciate that. I thank you so much for it. Uh, I think that this year, uh, we've lived up to the legacy that the last 99 years have established for Rotary and Pineville. I think we've had a very successful year financially. We've had a su successful year. Uh, you know, we're back to normal. The Pancake Day, the International Dinner, a lot of the things that we normally do, we did real well this year because we were back and it, it just fell into place. But I appreciate having been a part of this office. I think. A number of people have told me uh, in the past year that uh, one of the best things about being president of Rotary is 
being past president of Rosary. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to uh, next year, and I know we'll have a great year with great leadership then. So thank you very much for the opportunity to have served. Thank you, Brett, for your confidence this past year. <laughs> thank you so much. Now we've got, hey, you want to give something else away yet? No. Oh. Well, then sit back. No, okay. Got to get serious. Here, who's is, who's is this? What's going on here? Thank you very much. All right. Uh, uh, every year when we have these dinners, we pass the baton or the gavel on to the incoming president. It's my honor to introduce uh, a bunch of uh, folks who have served as presidents over the years. What I'd like you to do is hold your applause, Tracy, until the end. And then we want to, uh, each, each member that I mentioned, that if you would just get up over here, stage uh, left, Robin, stage left to right, this way, whatever. Go this way to this way, and we'd like to pass the gavel to our new president. So um, first one, Harry Altman, if you'd come up here, please, from 77 to 78. And then Bill Burchett was from 85 to 86. And Joe Dean Anderson from 86 to 87. He's going to fight me. <laughs> Bob Ford from 91 to 92. Kelly Moore, 98 to 99. Frank Daher, 2000, 2001. Mr. Hazard, Robert Williams, 02 to 03. And in this corner, weighing in at 127 pounds, Rocky Set Steva, 04 to 05. James Brown, 06 to 07. It's a lot of presidents. Uh, Seema from 07 to 08. Pam Howard, 09, 08 to 09. Uh, James Sullivan from 2010-2011. Gene Clark from 2011-2012. Nice to see you, Gene. You got to come up. Jerry Clark from 13 to 14. Daryl Maynard, 14 to 15. Eva Stewart, 15 to 16. Brent Lee, 16 to 17. If you want to come up here and come up on the stage, we'll, we'll figure out how to pass this, the, the, the thing around. Sharon Hall, 19 to 20. Daryl, come on up here. Brent, come on up here, guys. Uh, Sharon Hall, 19 to 20. David Lester, outgoing president, 21 to 22. And of course, our incoming president, which is Kay Hammond, who we just uh, uh, did the swearing in at. So I'm going to give the gavel to Dr. Altman, and he will pass it around. And then at the end, Kay will have it, and she can bang the drum.
Hey, Jerry Caney. You missed Jerry Caney. Jerry, why didn't you speak up? I'm so sorry. <laughs> and Jerry Caney was president of this club as well. I apologize. Blame me. Blame me. It, it, it's my fault. Also, it came to my attention that Kelly Moore, you are, uh, did he leave? Okay, you, there you are, Kelly. You look so nice in that suit. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> he is also a Paul Harris Fellow, so we wanted to recognize Kelly for that. Okay, I want to recognize the Centennial Committee. We, that couldn't have done it without their support. With these, each person, please stand up when I call their name. Uh, Jerry Clark, Shelley Justice Fouts, Kay Hammond, Jerry Caney, David Lester, Karen Prater, Seema Satch Diva, Jeff Vanderbeck, and in their absence we will honor Carrie Rose, uh, Greg Dempsey, and Jerry Kinder. Thank you guys for everything. And a special thank you, it's on your bulletin, but to Jerry Caney and his office, Lenore Pinion. She typed all these minutes for me, copies of everything. Jerry didn't hold back ever how many copies I wanted. I thank you, Jerry. And to the Pikeville YMCA for allowing us to use their meeting room. We use it to do board meetings. We use it for all these meetings. And I'm going to add up how many hours we did spend on this. <laughs> I can get some community hours, can I? Okay. Now, uh, if you will look on your table, everyone has a bulletin. There is one bulletin per, per table that has a gold rotary seal on the back. Whoever gets it, hold it up. Hold it up. And I didn't place these. Okay, if you have the gold bulletin, then the floral decor on your table is yours to take home. So when you leave, please take your prize with you. That is 21 gifts. Okay. <laughs> Did you have one? Okay. All right. Now, Jeff, you have some more? Yeah, Jeff has the, uh, some more door prizes. All right, Jerry Caney, I apologize for you. I'm sorry you were on my list, but I just couldn't get you. Because of that, I'm going to give you a complimentary subscription to the local News Express for 10 years. <laughs> Pam will be paying for that. All right. So who was your favorite newspaper before that? Oh, my God. Listen, I know people in the parking lot. We know what kind of car you drive. All right, the next one is a, uh, uh, the next thing is a uh, gift certificate to uh, David Hefner's Jewelry in memory of past Rotarian, late uh, Rotarian Jim Hefner, his dad, I guess, or his brother, his uncle. Uh, uh, three generations in Pikeville, and the $100 gift certificate goes to 1069. 1069. Oh, yeah. Frank Daher gets it. He's going to buy some jewelry. Good for you. The next one, here's that Community Trust Bank uh, Trust and Wealth Management gift certificate from Jerry Clark. Uh, it's for $2 million. <laughs> um, and uh, Jerry Caney is now uh, beating the folks up at the table over there to try to get that out of her. Uh, it's actually for $100, and it goes to 1091. 1091. Who's 1091? Oh, Dr. Worth. There you go. There you go. Dr. Worth is worth more now, $100 more. Uh, the next one, University of Pikeville, educator since 18... Again, if you don't know who you Pike is, all right, what are we getting? You get a, uh, an honorary doctorate degree, in, uh, and you could perform surgery tomorrow. No, I'm only kidding. You get a gift basket from the Osteopathic Medical School and Optometry School, 1107. 1107. Oh, Dr. Wheeler, Dr. Wheeler. And the last, I know, listen, everybody just take a deep breath. It's the last one of the night. I know you're sad to see this. 
But what it is, it's a thousand dollar advertising package for, from the Appalachian Newspaper Inc, which can be anything you want it to use for. But the publisher has got to approve the ads. Uh, and it's for a thousand dollars and it goes to, I picked two. Uh, 1072. Oh, all right, Laron Industries. There you go. Uh, who comes up next? Okay, Kay, you come up. Okay, it's nice talking to you all. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. We do have one more gift, and so I'll be giving that in just a few minutes. It's going to be a very few minutes. But first of all, I just want to thank all the Rotarians here for having faith and confidence in me to elect me as your president next year. We're going to have a good time. I promise you that. And uh, I have one announcement that there we, will, we will not be having Rotary tomorrow, so you get a rest. We won't be doing that. And also, we're going to draw for one more door prize, and it will be the big um, flower arrangement at the reception desk. But our theme this year is Imagine Rotary. So I have asked Julie, I called her today, and I said, Julie, let's just end this program with Imagine by John Lennon. Julie's going to be singing it. It's one of my favorite songs. And I want you to think as we leave, just imagine Rotary and what we can do. And we're going to have a great year. We're going to have fun. I'm going to be using Jeff Vanderbeck a lot. <laughs> <laughs>
our nation and throughout our community. So, till all hearts, all hearts clear, let me give this last number. One zero three three. One zero three three. Congratulations, Brenda. You get the fire arrangement up front.